It's the 56th day of the full-scale Russian uh, invasion and the ninth year of the war. My name is Vadim Krasnoki. And on behalf of all the team of Media Center Ukraine, I welcome all the reporters who are following the events of this war and who provide the truthful coverage of the Ukrainian Railroad. It's a state-owned company which governs all the transportation of the Ukrainian Railroads. It's a traditionally reliable and safe mode of transport in Ukraine. And now, when um, aviation uh, is not available and highways have been bombed, it's essentially the only reliable mode of transportation and today it is very important and it is it is under a lot of pressure i would like to welcome our guest alexander kratsovsky the head of passenger transportation at ukrainian railroad company hello so i would like to ask, ask a question to you the uh, air strikes on Lviv hitting not far from the rail, uh, railway station. So what can you say about this attack? In Lviv region, uh, all the railroad connections are now uh, working according to schedules. This morning, when the missile strikes hit, we acted according to the protocol. So we stopped the trains, uh, en route, we moved uh, the passengers from the railroad station to the shelter, but as soon as their air raid uh, warning was lifted, we have uh, continued uh, the connection. A few trains were rerouted uh, to alternative train stations, and then we used road vehicles to take them to the final destination point. Unfortunately, there were several strikes in Lviv. Uh, railroad uh, stations uh, have not been hit. There is some damage to railroad infrastructure. That is why a few trains were rerouted. But now they are repaired. And by this evening, we have forecast that Lviv a railroad will operate in its full extent. It's not the first experience. Like in Kharkiv, we have been operating under constant shelling. In Ukraine, we don't have safe spots now, but we continue working following the safety protocol. We have reporters uh, here, and perhaps some of them wants to ask a question to Alexander. Thank you so much. I'm Jane Arath from the New York Times. Uh, can you tell us about the impact of the, there were four missile strikes. One of them hit the garage, which was near railway tracks. The other three were said to have hit empty warehouses. Were those all part of the rail system, the warehouses? And the fourth strike that hit the garage, do you believe that was actually aimed at the railway? Thank you. As of today, we do not have grounds to say that uh, railroad infrastructure was the target. Uh, it, it just there's a lot of uh, railroad infrastructure in the heart of the city, and well, if you hit the city, you might hit the infrastructure, and uh, also. Some trains had to operate through diesel because the power grid of the railroad was hit. Uh, but it's not a critical impact to operation. We don't have any information today that it was railroad infrastructure that was the target. It's just we are inside many areas of the city and there are many other facilities around. That's why we were like neighboring the sites of 
this way. I also would like to note that it's not the first attack on railroad. We remember the tragedy in Kramatorsk and Kharkiv has just been mentioned. What can you say about uh, your perception of this situation? Um, fact that the aggressor is hitting the civilian infrastructure. I can say that unfortunately there are no safe facilities in Ukraine, neither in transportation system nor in residential areas. Because on the one hand, A, the enemy is uh, just cold-bloodedly hitting the civilian sites, and B, quite often Let's say the precision and accuracy of the strikes is uh, far from standard. So any civilian site can be shelled and they don't really care if there are dozens or hundreds of people there. We've seen how it happened with hospitals, maternity wards and railway stations. Let's say we, as the country, what we can do? We can develop protocols to minimize uh, the situation. Today, we have been inspecting shelters at all the railway stations. We want to make sure that there's uh, food and water and communication in all the shelters at the railroad. Also, we have developed processes to reduce crowding of people. When trains arrive, we want people to uh, not stay in one crowd. It might cause some discomfort to people, but still it's for their safety. So we want to make sure the boarding goes as fast and as smooth as possible. So all the facilities are under threat and transport infrastructure is not an exemption. But we can't stop operation because then the country will stop. But we have to do everything possible to minimize the risks and to follow all the safety protocols. So um, we hope people understand if suddenly we announce that people have to disembark the, the train and get to the shelter, well, they have to do it. Any more questions? Yeah, Jane. Thank you, sorry, follow up from the New York Times. Um, just to make sure I understand clearly, the garage that was struck with the fourth missile, that was, very close to railway tracks and it seemed to have been close to a switching station where where trains can come and go from Poland please correct me if if I'm wrong but you're saying that you do not believe that the target was the railway is that correct thank you well I, I cannot speculate what was the target of the enemy. This is up to the military to comment and they might have some specific information. As I said, today we do not have any objective grounds to say uh, that it was a precision strike on the railroad. Uh, some sites uh, neighboring the railroad were hit, but we don't have information that railroad infrastructure um, uh, was the target. And of course, I, I mean, I can't exclude the fact that it could be, but we cannot speculate. We don't have any objective information that railroad infrastructure was targeted. But yes, it was shelled. And it's happening daily, uh, it's just sometimes happening far from Lviv, so it's less public. But for example, if you uh, read our announcements in Kharkiv region, in Mykolaiv region, in Donbass area, almost daily, Railroad infrastructure gets shelled. It's just our people, our, our staff, they go out there, they repair the rails and um, the power grid, and the trains go on. So in Lviv, it's not as often, but for example, in Kharkiv, Mykolaiv, Vodonets, Kozaporizhia, Oblast, this unfortunately is, is happening daily. Thank you, Alexander. I would like to. Uh, change the subject, if possible, to a more positive direction. Can you announce some good news uh, about uh, restoring 
railroad communications with deoccupied areas, so about Chernihiv, for example. Uh, so are there any good news there? And what are the priorities in these areas? Actually, the railroad, which, uh, like, uh, even a few days ago, the only association with the railroad was the evacuation and taking everyone uh, to safety. You remember the images of crowded stations and trains, but now the railroad is um, switching rails now, and wherever it's possible, the railroad is helping to uh, bring life back to normality. So we have to keep this balance. Of course, we evacuate people from um, the areas of danger, but also we are trying to bring back life to the areas that need that. Talking specifically, Last week, there was an important event. We have restored connection with Chernigiv. Over 50 days, uh, the city had no railroad connection. And it's critical, because the highway to this city also uh, was damaged. So uh, having the railroad restored uh, helped us to bring back humanitarian aid to the city. 11 full... Uh, uh, railway cars of humanitarian aid were uh, taken back to this city. And now all the trains for the next few days are sold out, so we'll add more cars. Also, uh, dozens of thousands of people live uh, around Chernihiv. They work in Kiev, so it would help the economy of Kyiv. We will restore suburban electric rails uh, because these rails would enable uh, people from Kyiv, suburbs to work in Kyiv, and this will help uh, reinvigorate the economy of Kyiv. Also, Sumy direction has been liberated. We had this significant event in the city of Trostanets. Uh, we went into the city like a few days after the army uh, retook it. So the railroad workers are following the army closely to restore life. And in Trostanets, uh, well, the railway station was uh, destroyed by um, the enemy, but we repaired everything and we have even uh, set up a Starlink device to provide internet for people. And uh, this week we will be able to reconnect the capital, Kiev and Sumy and Konotop, which is another important direction. In south, we work in Mykolaiv direction, because Mykolaiv, which is uh, half sieged, I would say, there's only one highway out of it, we want also to have railroad connection for Mykolaiv, because it's important to take humanitarian aid into it. And lots of work is needed in Kiev Oblast, because Irpin and Bucha have been liberated, but uh, we hope to restore a railroad connection by the beginning of May. It's difficult because the bridges have been blown up, but our staff are doing their best to repair uh, the bridges. So hopefully quite soon, by early May, uh, we will be able to restore railroad communication with Bucha and European Wars. Of course, this, this city is They'll always remind us of the atrocities happening there, but we still have to work to bring life back to these cities. Also, every day we conduct spot repairs. For example, in Lviv, we want to repair the power grid to be able to operate in full. Besides these major tasks, every day we have to repair what has been damaged the night before. Any more questions from the audience? Andriy Shevchenko, Media Center Ukraine. Now, there's a very complicated um, operation going on to evacuate the civilians from Donbass, from Donetsk and Luhansk area. Uh, the uh, missile strike in Kramatorsk, has it complicated the situation even further? And how is the evacuation going on now? So the missile strike in Kramatorsk took 57 lives and really we had to decide whether to uh, stop operation there or not. 
but in the military administration and the locals, they called on us to continue operation because uh, dozens of thousands of people are still remaining there. So, as of today, Pokrovsk uh, is now the base station in the area and hundreds of people continue evacuating through the station every day. These people um, are very vulnerable because like half of people evacuated daily are patients who are not walking or the patients with neurological conditions. So they will be left helpless if they are not evacuated. Unfortunately, they would not be able to survive on their own if combat activity is intensified. So the whole team is now uh, working on this. And by the way, uh, also we have medics uh, escorting these trains. We have our medical staff from railroad hospitals and they now um, escort these evacuation routes. So once again, we call on the residents of Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast to not be late uh, because uh, it's not worth it to wait for the missile to strike your uh, house. Better evacuate earlier because we never know uh, when evacuation might no longer be possible. Because, of course, we have to stop it at some point. For example, from Slavyansk or Kramatorsk, we have stopped evacuation. So there's only one um, station left. And I also encourage the relatives of those who are staying in Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. If you still have phone communication with them, please encourage them to evacuate. Because, indeed, if they are lagging behind, creates a threat. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for providing all the responses. And this was Alexi, uh, Alexander Poritsovsky, the head of passenger transportation in uh, Ukrainian railroad company. And also I thank to all the reporters in the briefing who will use this information later. My name is Vadim Krasnovky on behalf of Ukraine Media Center.